ఫ్లై స్లైడ్స్ వేసినా ఫైటోకెమికల్స్ వర్క్ నాన్ న్యూట్రిటివ్ ప్లాంట్ బేస్డ్ బయో యాక్టివ్ కాంపౌండ్స్ దట్ హ్యావ్ డిజీస్ ప్రివెంటింగ్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ దే ఆర్ కన్సిడర్ అస్ అ నాన్ ఎసెన్షియల్ న్యూట్రియన్స్ ప్రొడ్యూస్డ్ బై ప్లాంట్స్ సో దీస్ ప్లాంట్ డిరైవ్డ్ బయో యాక్టివ్ కాంపౌండ్స్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ రీసెంట్లీ ఎక్స్ప్లోర్డ్ అ లాట్ అండ్ దేర్ ఆర్ గ్రేట్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ హ్యాస్ బీన్ సీన్ ఇన్ ది రిసర్చ్ కమ్యూనిటీస్ as they have versatile applications for human health and veterinary health. Uh, medicinal plants are the richest bio resources of uh, these components, uh, which are uh, normally used in our traditional systems, uh, medicinal systems like Ayurveda, right? And modern medicines are also uh, using these phytochemicals or also uh, extracting these phytochemicals and are using as a medicinal uh, values. and uh, they are also used as a food supplements flock medicines and uh, pharmaceutical intermediates and also they serve as a chemical entities for developing synthetic drugs also so majority of our foods that we are consuming in our day to day life like whole grains fruits vegetables nuts all of them are having these phytochemicals uh, these phytochemicals uh, they are like either in combination or in amount they have a, a tremendous uh, therapeutic potential in curing various uh, uh, ailments uh, they offer uh, like protection against diseases like cancer coronary heart diseases diabetes high blood pressure inflammation uh, microbial uh, diseases like bacterial diseases viral diseases parasitic infections and psychotic diseases spasmodic conditions ulcers osteoporosis like this you can name anything so what are these so far more than 1000 uh, known phytochemicals have been uh, extracted their structures has been identified and their biological functional properties has also been studied uh, plants normally produce these uh, chemicals to protect themselves uh, but recent researches now we are using against to protect those chemicals against human diseases uh, some of the well known phytochemicals are lycopenes in tomatoes isoflavones from soy and flavonoids from fruits uh, and uh, mostly these uh, phytochemicals are non essential nutrients uh, and human body doesn't need them in regular basis for su- sustaining their lives so phytochemicals and their health benefits so like i said they are they have a versatile uh, capacity to act in different conditions like they can also they can be antibacterial they can be antifungal anti inflammatory anti allergic anti spasmodic they can be hemoprotective hepatoprotective protecting livers hypolipidemic controlling obesity neuroprotective hypotensive immune modulators and carcinogenic agents uh, they widely act uh, uh, researchers has uh, shown us that they are preventing ages, uh, aging diabetes they can control the diabetic conditions they can control osteoporosis they can cure cancers and cardiovascular diseases they can also induce uh, apoptosis of cancer cells act as a diuretic agents that is uh, for kidneys Uh, cns central uh, nervous system stimulant analgesics and also protect us from uvb radiations induced carcinogens and many more so before going into the phytochemicals there are uh, certain terms that uh, you need to familiarize with okay so i will i'll go one by one so what are the medicinal plants so medicinal plants basically the first to the plant containing an active ingredient or a secondary metabolite that has a, some biological activity 
herbal medicines. Uh, these are the medicinal preparations that contains the bioactive ingredients from plant. Menstrual. Uh, it is a liquid or a solvent that is chosen for the extraction process. Mark. It is an insoluble or inert material that is left behind after extraction. Mission. Uh, it is the mixture of both the extract along with the solvent. What are the primary plant constituents? Primary plant constituents are the components uh, such as sugars, amino acids, proteins, and chlorophylls. Uh, secondary plant constituents, these are also known as secondary metabolites such as alkaloids, terpenoids, saponins, phenolic compounds, flavonoids, and tannins. Bioacid guided fractionation. It involves the extraction of plant material followed by uh, testing for its biological activity. So, in each process of fractionation of a pure compound, uh, you need to check the biological activity of each fractions and confirm it whether it is having a biological activity or not. So, that is called biocyclical fractionation. And then bioautography. Again, the same process which uses TLC, thin layer thermography, and the antimicrobial combined with the antimicrobial testing to identify the extract compounds, whether the compound has the antimicrobial activity or not. Next is fingerprinting in medicinal plants. So this involves chromatography, various chromatographic techniques, identification techniques, and chemical analysis to characterize a pharmacological active compound. Then immunoassay. Immunoassay is a process of identification of bioactive molecules as well as its biological activity via immune reactions, receptor bindings, uh, enzyme-mediated reactions like ELISA to determine its enzymatic. So, next is solvent extraction. So, in order to extract the phytochemicals from the plant tissues, you need to use solvents. Okay. So, this choice of solvents depends upon the plant or plant part to be extracted. Okay? So, whether you are using leaf, you are going to use a whole plant, or you are going to use root, or you are going to use the flowers or seeds. So, depending upon the part or the whole plant which you are going to use, you can choose the solvents. So solvents are of two types, like polar solvents and non-polar solvents. Okay, um, generally polar solvents are uh, like water, methanol, ethanol, etc. And non-polar solvents are hexane, petroleum ether, dichloromethane. So uh, here you can see. So here you can see. Uh, different uh, solvents with different polarity is given, uh, water being the, sorry, water being the highest uh, having polar uh, in nature and NXN is the lowest uh, non-polar solvent. So there are so many intermediate areas like petroleum ether, diethyl ether, ethyl acetate, chloroform, dichloromethane, acetone, n-butanol. So these are the various uh, solvents which are generally used in the extraction of phytochemicals. So, in the solvent uh, extraction, there is a different uh, methods we are using. Okay. One is called liquid-liquid extraction. So, this is a conventional way to separate two invisible solvents. And the compound to be extracted using liquid-liquid partition should be solidly organic solvent, but not in water to ease separation. Okay. During fractionation, solvent selected in the order of increasing polarity starting from NPC. Uh, properties of different solvents. Uh, water, it is the most polar solvent used in the extraction of polar compounds. Uh, it dissolves a range of compounds. It is cheap, non-toxic, non-inflammable. But uh, uh, there are some disadvantages like it may promote bacterial growth or fungal growth. So it may also lead to hydrolysis of your compounds. So you may require after the extraction, you may require either heat or freeze drying uh, method to concentrate the extract. Uh, next is alcohol. Uh, it is polar, visible with water and could extract polar secondary metabolites. Above uh, the concentrations above 20 to 30 percentage also act as a preservatives from microbes, so you can uh, you don't have like a, a microbial contaminations in your alcoholic extracts. 
at the low concentration it is non toxic and when you only need small amount of heat for concentrating the extract and next is chloroform chloroform is a non polar uh, solvent used uh, in extracting for pinoids molecules second metabolites like pinoids flavonoids fats and oils uh, soluble in alcohols and and absorbed and metabolized by body uh, it uh, also has a sedative and carcinogenic property so you should handle with care next is ether so ether is a non polar solvent used for extracting alkaloids terpenoids fumarins and fatty acids miscible with water has a very low boiling point very stable and does not react with acid base and metal this is a very important uh, phenomena here because while you are doing extraction or after extraction you are going to uh, store your uh, extracted product uh, it should not react with the any metal containers or any acids or bases okay so this is an important feature and then it is highly volatile and flammable The next one is ionic uh, or green solvent, ionic liquid or green solvent. It is highly polar and extremely heat stable. Uh, remain liquid even at three thousand degree uh, Celsius. Uh, extremely miscible with water and used for polar compound extraction. Uh, can be used in microwave assisted extraction and it is also non-flammable. So before. Uh, Going into the extraction process, there are several factors that determine which solvent you are going to choose. Okay, so like selectivity, you should choose your solvent based on the plant or plant parts you are going to use. And then safety, it should be uh, safe for handling. Like it should not be carcinogenic. It should not uh, cause you any skin infections or allergies. Right, it should not react with your skin and cost. so if you are going to do large scale extraction cost is a very important factor okay right so your uh, solvent should be uh, cheap and affordable okay then reactivity like i said it should not react with acids base metals or any other thing you are going to use any other instruments or vessels or gas flasks you are going to use uh, it should not react with okay and then recovery how much recovery after your extraction process the recovery should be very easy and then viscosity the higher the viscosity the more it will penetrate it can penetrate into the cells and the extraction process and bringing out the phytochemicals from the cells will be very easy boiling temperature uh, lower the boiling temperature is also one of the important major factors while extracting the phytochemical because if the boiling temperature is very high then you may lose all the compounds thermo liable compounds okay so or you should consider all these factors before selecting a particular solvent for uh, use in phytochemical extraction next is methods of extraction so there are different methods of extraction we will go one by one the first one uh, general method is called maceration so in maceration you are going to use a uh, whole or coarsely powdered plant material which is uh, normally mixed with the solvent in the ratio of 1 is to 5 so one time your uh, one times of your plant material with five times of your solvent okay in that ratio you should mix and then you put it in a room temperature uh, for three days and occasional shaking or you can also use a shaker incubator if you have you can use a shaker incubator also uh, the mixture is separated from the mark by filtration or decantation after standing solvent is generally evaporated in open or water bath and this method is best for the thermo liable drugs because uh, all the thermo liable compounds uh, they will not withstand a higher temperature above 45 or 50 degree okay. so below that uh, normal temperature you can use this uh, method for extraction the next is infusion so uh, this method uh, most of you have also done in the uh, everyday life right in preparing teas coffees right or uh, preparing any other decoctions in your home right so same method same kind of method okay. so like maceration a fine powder plant material is placed inside a container hot or cold solvent uh, is poured on top of the powder material and soaked for a short time and then suitable extraction of biomaterial biomolecule is 
uh, ready, uh, which are readily soluble is extracted with this method. Uh, it, this method can be used for preparing fresh extraction before use. Okay, so this is a very uh, short term. You need only very short duration for this method. So you can always prepare a fresh extract before going for any further biological experiments. And the solvent ratio generally practiced here is four is to one or sixteen is to Next method is digestion. Uh, this process involves moderate heat during extraction, moderate uh, like uh, 40 to 60 degree of temperature. Okay. So uh, the solvent and the plant material is placed in a water bath or a oven at 50 degree centigrade. So heat is applied throughout the process continuously uh, to decrease the viscosity of the sol solvent and enhance the extraction of secondary metabolite. Uh, this is also suitable for readily soluble compounds. The next is percolation. So most of the, uh, you have seen a similar type of uh, apparatus, this apparatus in your homes like people in your South India, they use like filter coffee, right? You know, so it's a kind of a same apparatus like preparing a filter coffee. So this apparatus is called a percolator. Uh, here we use a dried fine powder plant material, which is moistened with the solvent of extraction. Uh, the mixture is kept for four hours, uh, and after four hours, the content is uh, transferred to percolator and allowed to uh, stand for 24 hours. Okay, so after 24 hours, the lower part is opened and the along the and the liquid is allowed to drip slowly. Okay, that the liquid will uh, drip slowly, and the and it is collected and the extract is filtered and further used for uh, other studies. The next is soft sled extraction, one of the popular methods, also known as continuous hot extraction. So the apparatus is called a soft sled extractor. Here, fine uh, dried fine powder plant material is placed inside the thimble. So here, inside the, the, the here it will be the thimble will be placed inside this part portion, and then uh, it is covered with a clean cloth or filter paper. And the extracted solvent is uh, placed below the flask, the round bottom flask at the bottom, uh, where your solvent will be there, and the heating mantle will heat it, and the solvent will vapor, and it will go through uh, through the condenser, and it will condense, and the solvent will come back to the thimble. So inside the thimble, it will drip inside the thimble, which contains your food drug, and the extraction process happens. Okay, so this process is continuously repeated. Okay, the heating of the solvent is continuously done until the all the uh, like the, all the uh, chemicals, phytochemicals are extracted from the uh, material, plant material that is kept inside the thimble. Okay, uh, this method is not suitable for the thermolyable compound because we are continuously using heat because you need to evaporate the solvent, right? So you need to boil at the boiling point of the solvent you are using. So normally the boiling point of most of the solvents will be about 70 to 70 degree, right? Up to 78 to 90 sometimes. So at that higher temperature, your compound, some of the compounds may be degraded due to heat. Okay. So but this method can be used for isolating large amount of drugs uh, using small volume of solvent. Okay? And no filtration is required because you are Already your plant material is wrapped in a cloth or a filter paper and kept inside. You no need to uh, extract uh, do uh, filtration after the extraction. The next one is uh, microwave assisted extraction. It is one of the advanced extraction procedure. Uh, techniques uses mechanism of uh, dipole rotation and ionic transfer by displacement of charged ions present in the solvent and drug material. So this uh, electromagnetic radiation, so between uh, 300 megahertz to 3000 gigahertz of energy is applied for the extraction. Uh, most suitable for polar solvents, uh, minimizes the use of solvents and extraction, time of extraction. Uh, generally used for phenolic and flavonoids, compounds like phenolic and flavonoids. Next one is ultrasound assisted extraction. So the procedure uses the ultrasound with a frequency range from 
uh, 20 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz it disrupts the breakdowns the plant cell uh, cell wall and increases the penetration the solvent penetration ratio for the release of secondary metabolites uh, applicable to small quantity of solvents uh, samples and also you uh, uses uh, less solvent and yield is maximum okay uh, the method is difficult to be reproduced as high frequency may degrade the phytochemical by producing free radicals so one of the greatest uh, biggest disadvantages uh, in this method is uh, free radical is generated which may degrade your phytochemical and the next one is super supercritical fluid extraction sfe so it is most of the most popular free extraction technique uh, supercritical fluid carbon dioxide is used as a supercritical fluid and sometimes it is also modified uh, with co uh, solvents such as ethanol or methanol uh, improved selectivity higher uh, yield extractions and better fractionation capabilities is an advantage for this system uh, applicable to hydrophobic compounds with uh, extraction efficiency uh, due to high infusing and low uh, polarity of supercritical carbon dioxide like hydrophobic compounds like volatile acids uh, lipids or fatty acids you can extract through this uh, polar compounds can also be extracted by adding polar modifiers so polar modifiers as mentioned here like ethanol or methanol can be also used uh, along with the supercritical uh, carbon dioxide to extract the polar compounds uh, using this method. And again, before choosing an extraction method, there are several factors that are need to be considered, like stability to be. So your uh, the compound, the phytochemical compound, should be stable, stable to be. It should not be thermoliable compound. So you should, if your uh, compound is thermoliable. Then you should choose methods like macerations or percolations. Okay, right? So, if your compound is heat stable, then you can go for succulate extraction, so microwave assisted, or, uh, ultrasonic uh, method. Okay? So, then nature of solvent. Again, polar solvent, which solvent you have to use, polar solvent, so on, polar solvent. Right? And then cost of the drug. So, cost of all the extraction methods will be adding to the cost of the drug you are going to synthesize the process of uh, uh, preparing the drug compound so you should also choose a method which is low cost okay affordable and duration of extraction like maceration you can allow for three days of uh, standing you should allow minimum 48 hours of uh, standing but in uh, ultrasonic wave or microwave assistant or super critical fluid so you can get it in few minutes you can your extraction is done in very few minutes so duration of the extraction process is also a major factor you should consider and then final volume level. The, uh, uh, the phytochemical the extracted compound that volume how much you need is also a major factor and then intended use what for what purpose you are doing like what kind of applications you are doing in vitro studies or in vivo studies Right. So, in in vitro studies, we can uh, use a very little amount of uh, drug compounds that is produced. But if you are going for a uh, in vivo experiment, then you need a large amount of large volume of drugs in grams, right? So, in grams. So, for that, now you need large scale extraction. So, uh, for the type of use in vitro or in vivo, uh, based on that, your extraction method should be chosen. Next is fractionation and purification. Okay. So now you have done extraction. So after your extraction, you need to purify your compound because you you may not get you get all the secondary metabolites, uh, many secondary metabolites mixed in your extract. Okay. Now you need to purify particular extract, uh, particular compound. Okay. So for that fractionation purposes helps you. Okay, fractionation is a process of separation of plant extracts into various fractions, which further separates the fractions into number of compounds until a pure compound is isolated. So this is basically achieved by two ways, by either chemical or physical method. The first one is a, uh, separation funnel. This is a general method followed in most cases. 
here we use a different solvents like the different polarity of solvents like indexin chloroform acetone ethyl acetate butanol and butanol okay so uh, are selected to fractionate to give uh, crude extract uh, which is completely dissolved in water okay the crude extract and the solvent are the taken in equal volume in a separated funnel and are vigorously shaken and allowed to settle uh, settle for few hours okay after few hours the bottom of the funnel is opened and collected the aqueous layer is collected and the remaining solvent layer is collected separately again the process is repeated two to three times with the aqueous layer uh, okay so repeated process will uh, extract and to get you maximize extraction from the uh, aqueous fractions okay and the remaining portion left after uh, extraction the aqueous residual aqueous fraction this called uh, portion is called residual aqueous fraction raf and the next one is fractional distillation the process of separating or purifying compounds from a mixer uh, based on the difference in their boiling point okay so different uh, here you can see uh, the on the glass is attached with the water bath, right so the water bath uh, the temperature of the water bath can be controlled and the temperature is set according to the uh, evaporating uh, boiling point of the solvent and there is a condenser is there and then here you can see a collector collector is there so the compound is evaporated with the solvent and each compound is fraction uh, compound fractionated uh, will be condensed and collected separately to several sequences so several sequences are used to collect the different fractions of the extract uh, condensing extracts and the compounds can be further separate the next one is fractional crystallization method so here large number of compounds that are exist in nature are in uh, crystals or as crystals uh, separation is achieved by a formation of crystals from concentrate extract using heat or refrigeration method so here in this uh, picture you can see uh, whey protein phospholipid concentration is there which is uh, directly dissolved uh, ethanol fraction is obtained from that uh, which contains total lipid uh, extract residue is now present in the Uh, ethanol fraction. This ethanol fraction is now uh, crystallized. Okay, crystallized, and then uh, the crystals are separated. Okay, uh, recover of the PL. PL fraction is called phospholipid fraction. Okay, so the polar lipid analysis by HPLC after the fraction ethanol fraction crystallization method, uh, they got 38.6 percentage of uh, polar lipid by mass. So PI here stands for PI is four percent. The remaining thing uh, present in the extract is after the separation of uh, polar lipid is yes. uh, PI, which is four percent. It's PI is phosphoryl and inositol. That is four percent. It's PE. PE is phospho phosphoryl uh, ethanol amine. Okay, phosphoryl ethanol amine. That is thirty-four percent. It's PS is phosphoryl silane, which is eight percent. And PC, which is thirty-two percent, is phosphoryl chloride, and SM is uh, sphingomyelin. Okay, that is twenty-two percent. So, using this uh, fractional crystallization method, uh, the from the total liquid residue, extract residue, you have got different types of uh, phospholipids, right? Fractional percent, different type of phospholipids. So, this is a way of fractionating your Different molecules present in your extract. And next is sublimation. Uh, sublimation. The method involves changing from solid to gaseous state uh, without passing to liquid state. Uh, substances like camphor and volatile oils are purified using this method. Okay, so normally here in the picture you can see uh, inverted uh, funnel is uh, kept over the. China dis, which contains the uh, compound that is needed to be separated, and then it is heated from the bottom. The vapors, the compound uh, upon heating, the compound transforms from solid phase into gaseous phase, and it deposits uh, deposits on the surface of the funnel, which is then uh, collected separately after the heating. So so far we have seen different types of. Uh, Then now chromatographic techniques. So how to separate your compounds based on uh, 
is shape, size, and charges. Okay, so this involves generally involves the use of a mobile phase and a stationary phase. Okay, stationary phase is normally used in uh, silica gel, sapphire uh, dye, sapphire rose, aluminium, cellulose powder, and steel. <coughs> uh the mechanism uh, followed here is adsorption uh, partition affinity ion exchange or uh, size exclusion and uh, techniques followed is paper uh, chromatography thin layer chromatography column chromatography uh, liquid chromatography and gas chromatography so the mechanism of separation so adsorption to so yeah so you can uh, see there is a column column is filled with the matrix either a silica aluminia saturated with the solvent of choice okay and a mixture of compound containing x and y are added along with the solvent okay so then the elution is happening so during the elution compound y moves faster it moves faster than compound x which means compound y has is loosely bound okay loosely bound to the matrix that is silica or aluminum that's why it is not able to uh, elute first okay so compound y is eluted first and then compound x which is binding to the column uh, matrix will be eluted by changing the phase of the solvent or changing the ph of the solvent you can elute the next one so likewise different compound the mixture like uh, x y or uh, you can have so many number of compounds present different compounds present in the extract can be extracted individually using this method next method is partition chromatography okay so bioactive compounds present in your extract are separated by addition of two or more uh, invisible solvents solubility of compounds in each solvent is a determining factor Uh, the two immiscible solvents are then separated, also known as liquid-liquid partition. And like uh, the earlier funnel-based method, we have been discussing that the same method. Okay? So the solution is containing. Uh, you can see the first flask has uh, two compounds: a uh, yeah, black one and red-colored compound. Okay? Then you add a, another solvent for extracting. Okay, separating these two compounds. So when you add the other solvent and then you vigorously shake vigorously, the solvent which is readily soluble in the other solvent, in the next solvent, will be moving towards from this phase to this phase. And then you separate both the solvents, the different solvents, using a the way a draining method, drain, and then you can isolate the molecules. And the next one is affinity chromatography. So, in the affinity chromatography method, a stationary phase uh, is a ligand. Okay? So, ligand that is positioned in a separating column, and a mobile phase is used to wash down the compounds that have no affinity 
for the stationary phase and compounds having high affinity for the stationary phase are separated into the specific LUP system. Okay. So here in the picture, you can see the problem is packed with the uh, polymer, which is uh, 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 have a specific ligand binding uh, protein. Okay, ligand binding protein of interest for a specific protein. Okay. So when your protein mixture is added to uh, to the cotton and then solvent is added, the protein mixture will bind the interest protein of interest. Uh, which, uh, which is specific for the ligand filled in the ligand matrix will bind to the ligand, okay. And then the proteins which are not binding will be eluted, okay. To separate after that eluting of all the non binding proteins, you add a solution, uh, specific eluting solution like uh, this solution will contain different pH or different ionic strength, right? So it can be added to that to elute that particular protein which is binded to the ligand and that is uh, collected separately and studied for further. Next is ion exchange property. Uh, separation of uh, ionizable molecule based on the total charges such as proteins, peptides, amino acids and nucleotides uh, can be done using this method. Uh, similar type of molecules are separated readily by changing the buffer pH. Uh, depending on the pH of the environment, proteins may carry a net positive charge, a net negative charge, or no charge. Uh, the pH at which the molecule has no net charge is called isoelectric pH. So, again, here the same uh, polymer here, uh, it is based on uh, in the previous method, uh, like uh, we have seen uh, ligand based method. Okay? So, here we see polymer which has charges like positive charge or negative charge. Okay, so when the net charge of the uh, molecule is higher than the net charge of your uh, solvent, then it is eluted. Okay, so like that the molecules are uh, based on the charges, it is eluted. Next one is size exclusion from uh, molecules as the name such as molecules are separated based on their molecular size. It is also known as gel filtration or molecular sealing technique. The separating matrix consists of different beads of, of course of specific distribution. Uh, molecules are separated based on the size as they pass through the product and eluted in decreasing volume. So in the picture you can see uh, the column is packed with the uh, matrix. Okay, The matrix is of the bead size is will be uniform. Okay. And this, when the sample uh, mixture is added and the uh, solvent is uh, added to elute the column, the molecules that are uh, larger in size will elute first because the smaller molecules, based on the size of the beads and the pores in between the pores, it cannot travel. So it will not uh, come out fast. So the molecules which are uh, with size are not uh, different. It will elute first, and the molecules which are uh, size are similar to the size of the beads, it will elute uh, slowly. Okay? So, like this, based on the size of the molecules, you can elute. Different, you can separate different compounds. Next is chromatographic techniques. Excuse me. So, chromatography. First one is paper chromatography technique. Okay. So, this is based on the mechanism of adsorption. Uh, apparatus generally uses a glass chamber, a filter paper made from cellulose material. Now, filter paper is loaded with the sample and it is suspended in the glass, like here, okay. containing the mobile phase. So, in the bottom of the glass chamber, there is a mobile phase. Uh, but generally, it will be a solvent of your choice, okay, or a combination of different solvents you can use. The mobile phase uh, ascends the filter paper via capillary action. Okay, filter paper absorbs capillary actions, so the mobile phase moves uh, upwards. And the compounds that are readily soluble uh, in the solvent will first move along with the solvent and the R of value it will be calculated to identify each uh, compound. Okay, uh, This is a very simple and cost effective and very sensitive method uh, 
uh, only disappointment is fragility of the paper. The next method is thin layer chromatography. It, uh, it also involves adsorption mechanism. Separation is based on the interaction between the compounds and the stationary phase. Uh, this is ideal for low molecular weight compounds. The stationary phase here used is silica gel. Okay. In the earlier one, we used paper cellulose material. Here it is silica gel coated glass plates or aluminum plates. Okay. The RF value of a known and unknown uh, compounds are uh, compared to identify the molecules. Uh, compound spotter can be scrapped. Okay. Since this is a silica gel material, it can be scrapped and re dissolved and further purified using various solvent systems. Less time consuming than paper chromatography. Uh, you can uh, get clear spots and stable. And uh, since it is a silica gel, which is an inert material, it is stable in most acidic mobile phase also. And next one is column chromatography. This involves several mechanisms such as adsorption, molecular seep, or ion exchange. Uh, column is made up of glass tube like uh, silica gel, cellulose, sulfide and sulfurose. Like different matrices can be used as a uh, stationary phase. Polar to non polar solvents are used. So, white, this is a uh, widely you can use all type of solvents uh, in this method for separation. And fractionation of solvents uh, collected individually at specific time intervals and finally pure compounds are characterized. So, as you see in the diagram picture, uh, mixtures separated uh, to be separated are dissolved. In the mobile phase and added to the column uh, which contains the stationary phase and then the solvent is added mobile phase is added and as you continuously add the mobile phase you can also collect the fractions like uh, uh, here using a test tubes or uh, any container the glass container you can uh, collect uh, different fractions uh, in different volumes and with the specific different time intervals you can collect fractions and each fractions can be uh, checked for their purity and the next method is gas chromatography. This method is a uh, partition of compounds using two invisible solids. One is a gaseous phase, another one is a solid, inert solid stationary phase. Uh, substances that are soluble in gaseous phase will leave the liquid and get separated. Inert gas such as helium is used as a constant flow rate. Uh, crude extract dissolved in solvent is in the system. Uh, this is a diagrammatic representation of the gas chromatography. So, in the sample injection code, you will inject the uh, sample dust that is dissolved in the solvent and a carrier gas is passed. The carrier gas is normally an inert carrier gas such as helium is used and your compound is carried into a column, separating column. Okay? This column is embedded inside a hot oven uh, which uh, is a temperature control. Normally, high degree of temperature is used. So that the solvent is converted into a gaseous phase. Okay, so the solvent compounds which are uh, dissolvable in the gaseous phase, that is, is highly dissolved in the solvent and it is also dissolved in the gaseous phase. This first will be carried out by the gas to the detector, and the detector will uh, take the electrical signal, which is then processed using a software. Okay, so like this, your compounds can be uh, separated and identified. And next one is high performance liquid chromatic HPLC. Uh, here, the compounds dissolved in solvents can be analyzed. Allows, uh, this method allows both qualitative and quantitative analysis of the compounds. So, you can like quality of purity of the compound can also be checked. And quantity, how much milligram, nanogram, or microgram of compound is present can also be calculated using this. And then, solvent system used to separate. As the solvent system is used to separate the compounds, the pump delivers the mobile phase at a constant flow rate. Each compound is separated and detected by the difference in diluting speed. Okay. In the diagrammatic representation, you can see a mobile phase is there, a uh, solvent delivery pump is there, and a stationary column is there. The column is packed with stationary material like silica gel, sulfide or sulfurose. And the sample liquid is injected. Okay, when the sample liquid is injected, the solvent carries the, uh, the mobile phase carries the compound through uh, inside the column. 
uh, material. Like as we said, the adsorption mechanism is available. Uh, some compounds bind to the matrices, and some compounds uh, that do not bind to the matrix are eluted first. So based on the elution first uh, separation uh, speed, the compound is detected using a detector, and then the uh, signal is converted into mixture. Okay. So, electrical signal, the signal is converted into data and your compound is identified and quantified. So, these are all the different uh, methods that have been followed generally for using uh, for extraction of the phytochemicals from plant materials or uh, any materials uh, which are you intend to use. Thank you all for. The session is open for discussion. If you have any questions, you can ask. Yes. Uh, you said that if viscosity is higher, the penetration of the solvent into the plant part will also be higher. How Sorry. Is it? Isn't it? Uh, when well, I'm mentioning the factors of the solvent, is it that if viscosity is higher, the penetration of the solvent into the plant part will be higher, and so extraction will be higher. Sorry, your your voice is echoing. I'll I'll put it in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Question, sir, do phytochemicals have a potential to be used as anti-aging compounds? Yes, definitely. There are a uh, lot of uh, research is going on. Many phytochemical compounds isolated from uh, seaweeds are being currently used as an anti-aging compounds. You can check literatures. If you can uh, Google as uh, anti-aging compounds, phytochemical compounds, you will get a lot of literatures. Any other questions? Well, it's taking too long to type. Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, yes, we can. Ah, yes, sir. So my question was, you said that if viscosity is higher, the penetration of the solvent in the plant part will be higher, and so extraction will be higher. Yes. So if viscosity is higher, how will the how will it be able to penetrate the plant extract better? Like, won't it be having more resistance to uh, if, uh, for penetrating the plant extract? Uh, like, uh, you use its other factors like temperature in this place, right? So, when you increase the temperature heat, you will give a little bit of heat along with the viscosity of the solvent. Right? Then the uh, cells will be able to easily break down. Okay, so it will be breaking down the cells and then it will be easy for extracting the compounds. And the other question I had was uh, I forgot the process that you were mentioning, but somewhere you were talking about extracting a phospholipid using an ethanol solvent. Fractional crystallization. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, why yeah, a phospholipid has a hydrophobic head and a hydrophilic tail. So why do we go with ethanol which is polar instead of something which is more in the middle of the two? Uh, this is to like a separation of uh, different compounds from the phospholipids that we are intended to use. Okay, so different uh, phospholipids have different functions. Right? So you use a common solvent which can be like uh, used to decrease the uh, Temperature for uh, crystallization. Okay? So that is why it is used for crystallization. So it's like this: this will extract the phospholipid, and you will keep you, you will remove out all the impurities. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Welcome. Any other questions? Uh, so, uh, no more questions, then we will move towards our uh, second lecture. Uh, Professor Abhijit Kate from uh, Naipur, Ahmedabad has joined us. Uh, Good morning, everyone. Morning.
give me a minute for this. Sure. No problem.